And in the Mac, I have the wild type. We use the, uh, the one, the mutant that I have in Windows, and we transform it into the wild type. Is this the wild type so, I don't know wha uh, which is the difference in those okay, two. The wild type does is el ultimo, ultimo. Well, you know that I don't. So pick the one where you have the mutations back into the wild type, whichever it is. Okay. If you don't know, you should have made notes. As I said, keep a lab notebook because you don't want to do this over and over again. <laughs> and what I'm going to do now, oh, hang on, what is this? Ah, no problem. What I'm going to do now is exactly what I did with the wild type, I mean with the mutant, and find the hydrogen bonds. There should be differences because instead of having an arginine, now we have a lysine and we have a cysteine instead of the alanine. The arginine is capable of more hydrogen bonds than the lysine, and the cysteine is actually capable of hydrogen bonds that the alanine cannot do. So what we have, sorry there, so what we have here is that after turning the mutant into wild type, I only lose one hydrogen bond, which is okay, right? We are expecting these mutations to be mild because they are not destroying the structure and we don't see any major effect. That is, we have a mostly alpha helical protein and it retains that property even if it's wild type or mutant, okay? If we had lost 10 hydrogen bonds, I will look at this model and this wild type protein with certain um, skepticism, right? Because we are changing it a lot. Still, how can we make sure that this wild type makes sense? Well, there's parameters to measure that and they are included in Chimera. And my objective in showing you this is because Chimera is the most simple way to do this type of calculations. They are pretty much anything else that works as well as Chimera requires the command line and other type of software that has no graphical interface, okay? So, you, the, what I'm gonna do, what do you have in your screen? The wild type or the mutant? The wild type. The wild type, mutant? Okay, so for those of you that have the mutant, what, I, what we have to compare your mutant with is the Windows version, okay? But this procedure works for both. You only do it once in the class. So I'm gonna do it in both computers at the same, well, not at the same time, but simultaneously. <laughs> so, we have the structure, we know the hydrogen bonds. Now, I'm gonna ask you to select the lysine that we mutated last class, which was number arginine 45. Can you find it, or do you need help? No. Come on, admit it, you need help. <laughs> well, if you go to favorites, click on this command line, this option. And what's going to happen is you get this tiny window down here, this very forbidding un unknown window or row. Now, after you do that, go to that row and click, or type rather, select, space, colon uh, 45. Mm -hmm. Select, as in select, space, colon 45. Mm -hmm. It's going to work for both mutant and wild type. Here, what we're telling the program is whatever is called residue 45, select it for me. And if you press enter, you can see that the La arginine in the mutant was selected. Okay. Yes? After favorites, what do you need to select? Say that again? After favorites, what do you need In favorites, bring up, click on the command line. And the command line should make this visible. And after it's visible, put your mouse there, type select, space, colon, 45, and you are golden. Okay, now I'm gonna.
What are you doing, Cecilia? I think Come I on. can save it, but I don't have oh, well, it stuff. Well, yeah, if you it's cannot it's find it, just open the, the mutant and follow the procedure. Yeah. No, I have the wild type, supposedly. <laughs> well, don't wait forever to open it. Cecilia, you no, lost a residue. <laughs> you destroy it, even I'm worse. Check the one from the first class and maybe there I come to okay. that's a well -type. Okay, but the, 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 so does anybody else have the residue selected? Yes. Okay, so Cecilia, pay attention to what I'm gonna do so you can do it. Later. Okay. Okay, but are you there in the selection? Okay, cool. Now, in what we're gonna do so we can see changes, when we can see what process we're following, is go to tools, structure analysis, and find clashes, because the residue is selected. We just have to click on that button that says designate. And if the arginine is selected, you should get 11 atoms selected. And if you have the lysine, you should get nine. Okay? Now we need to make sure that the contact criteria is selected there. And then this check mark over here has to have a little check. Select. Select, select. Okay. Now, this is the most important one because I missed this in the other class. This ratio button is the one that has to be selected. So it has to look like this. So you see, after I click on this ratio button, now I have 17 contacts. And if you look around, now we have these yellow lines. I'm going to go back to the black background because I think the yellow is going to look better there. Mm -hmm. There. <laughs> which, res which residue are you using? Lysine or argent? Okay, and did you select contact? You sure? So it reads minus 4, 4 and 0, 0. Okay, next question. Did you erase all of the heteroatoms except the heme group? Select <laughs> residue. <laughs> so how, what's the list in yours? Like that? Should we change the answers? Uh, over here. No, no, not the residues, above of the residues. Okay, so you have all of the heteroatoms. That's the reason why you have more contacts, because there's more atoms. I recommend you erase those already. Select the sulfur and the HOH, erase them. Tools, the structure analysis, find clashes and contacts. Okay. No, it has a left. Where was the actions? In actions. No, delete. We want to delete them. It's at the bottom. It's the last option. Yes. Now. No, no, no. For those of you that have already gotten to the clashes, because of this select option, you can notice that the selection looks different. It's because the atoms are selected, not the whole residues. To change that, we need to use the arrow key. You know the arrow keys? They should be close to your right hand and they have arrows. <laughs> Press the one that points away from you. And if you do it right, your selection should read something like this, 94 atoms and 96 bonds. 94 and 96. Okay? 
No what? So you selected the, the contacts again? Yes. Uh, How many contacts? Yes. Okay. Now, was this on? Okay. Now press the arrow up. If it's not doing anything, it's because there's no selection. But it is, it's in green and everything. And it's not changing. And you have the window selected? Yes, look at this window. If I have this window selected. Yeah, for sure. You need to check mark this. <laughs> and did you, is the, your license selected? You have to press this button. If, if that is in red, that means you have nothing selected and it's not going to do anything. It needs to be in blue. Change the ratio button. The, the one at the bottom. Lower the. Uh huh. Now that's the right. Now click on this window. Huh. Okay, so the selection is lost. Something is. You need to apply it. Okay, now go to the other window. Click on apply. Okay, in yours, it's not finding any contacts. And I don't know why. Click on this one, contact. Okay, now, back 17. And the selection is in effect. Click on the top of this window. Uh, hide that menu. Just click anywhere, doesn't matter. And use the ar up arrow to select all of that region. Now we're in the same spot. Don't change anything. Okay? Cecilia? Yes, I got 98. No, I got 95 atoms, 97 bonds. Okay, let's go with that. I don't know what you erased, but it doesn't sound terrible. Now, what matters is that we have this region and we identify this. Okay? Now, this is the fun part. We need to go again to tools and we are going to go to structure editing. And what we want now is this minimize structure. Now remember, this is the structure from the database. We know the resolution, we know the qualities. It's OK, it's actually quite good. But we're still going to use this tool to make it as close to ideal as possible. So as your screen is now, click on minimize. Mm -hmm. We're going to get this other window. Uh, if you think your computers are not really powerful, type <coughs> 100 here. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to type 1,000. <laughs> so 100 in the first, 100 in the last, and 0 in this one in the middle. How do you get the <laughs> tools? <laughs> Structure, editing, and minimize. Mm -hmm. okay. Gradients, yeah. That's expensive computation and speaking. Okay, then click minimize. We should get this other window, which I think it's okay as the default. Should we select with non complex files? It's by default is without selection. Uh -huh. It's okay like that because we already removed the waters and the other ions. So it doesn't matter. Click OK. We should get now a window for hydrogen here. 
it opens automatically. So if it's not doing that, you have to wait. Oh. <laughs> and once that is done, and you reach this, just click on specified and then OK. But I'm going to wait until you tell me that you have reached that point. Yeah, this is totally dependent on how fast is your computer. No, pues esto va a <laughs> yeah, forever and ever. Because a protein without hydrogens is not realistic, is it? And any protein that has been determined with X-rays has no hydrogens determined. You really have to ask that? How easy do you think is for an X-ray beam to interact with an electron or a proton in a hydrogen? It's pretty difficult. <laughs> yeah. It's easier to ionize something with a hydrogen than to see the hydrogen. Oh, in NMR, you can observe them, but that's another technique. So if you reach this, uh, this message, click OK again after selected on specified. And we should get, this is the last one. Oh, no, sorry, the second to last. Uh, you should read Amber 14SB and AMC one, uh, AM1BC. This, in a way, is just a list of how the amino acids should behave. And this one is a semi-empirical quantum mechanics calculation that is used for anything that is not protein or DNA. Because we have a heme group and an iron, after you click OK in this option, we are going to be asked, what is the charge of the iron and what is the charge of the heme? The iron here is set at 2, which is probably common and regular for a non-oxidized iron. And the heme group has a minus 4 because Two charges are collating the, the iron, but this heme has a couple of groups that look acidic, so it's retaining a minus four charge. At this point, if you have no idea about those charges, you're going to have to go back to a biochemistry book or something like that and read on, or decide what are you going to try to do. In general, here for Chimera, you can put things that makes no sense and you can get results, but I don't recommend doing that. In general, they should make sense. So if you got that, click OK. And this is the part that is going to take a little while. So if you have your um, task manager open, you should see this. This program is part of Chimera, and it's doing the calculations. I don't know how many CPUs this computer has, but it's using 35% of all of the available CPUs. So I guess, yeah, it has three cores, it's using one. No, I think this is actually much cheaper than that. Now, as you can see in the screen, it's hard to tell that something is going on, but the task manager is telling us that something is going on. So wait until this is done. Doing this in any other way, and I'm talking about using a structure with a heme group to calculate these things, it's way much harder any other way than using Chimera. So this is the easiest for that. Yeah, you have only the, the oldest version, and I like that one better. What Windows is that? That's cool. No, it's not TI. Windows drop support. Windows is como. Windows, Yeah, it's like a. 
poopy no, diaper. Yeah. Yeah. A poopy diaper? Yeah, you don't want to keep it, do you? <laughs> but it's very apt because it's window saying no this is soil get rid of it but do you understand the underpinnings of that they spy on you they know what you're using they know when I try to use sign huh? yeah. <laughs> sí. and they block it. Ah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, yeah, you literally. Yeah. Because they probably don't know when I use it. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, you have to learn on your own that part of the business. <laughs> so do you mean to imply that somebody has to teach you that? Because nobody taught me that. <laughs> okay, look up SSH tunneling. That's all I'm going to say. No, it's actually very simple, very transparent, very obvious. And nowadays, because many people use virtualization, that is popular. <laughs> You're gonna have to find out. Okay, so while we wait for the mutant to finish, I'm gonna do exactly the same again with the wild type. So if you didn't catch the process before, I'm gonna repeat it. And here is the wild type. I already, oh, I haven't selected my lysine, my favorite lysine. I don't even know where it is. Uh, 45, right? Yes. Okay, selected, then tools, structure analysis, clashes, uh, designate, then contact, then <laughs> select, then continuously. Here I found 15 contacts, so it's likely two contacts less than on, on the uh, mutant. I'm gonna press the arrow up to select everything. And I think I make a mistake and I didn't show my lysine, so I'm going to have to do that now. Here it goes. So here these contacts seem to be worse, but it's just one, uh, sorry, two less in number. Okay. Now what I want to observe is in structure editing, sorry, and minimize what happens to that after or rather during the, oops, the minimization. What did I do? Oh, yeah, of course, sorry. There we go. I'm gonna use a hundred again. Uh, a hundred or a thousand? Sorry, a thousand, a zero, and a hundred, and minimize. And here, since this is another structure, I'm gonna have to go over everything again. Minimize, unspecified. This is going to be exactly the same because it's exactly the same protein down to the heme. And this step is also going to take a while because it has to do the semi-empirical quantum mechanics calculations for the heme group. In my case, my activity monitor is over here so I can see what's the CPU used by Chimera. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to Windows, I'm expecting this to be done before my computer, but I'm not placing any bets. So even if your window in Windows looks like this, don't worry, just let it finish. Okay, in this computer, in the Windows computer, the calculations for the quantum mechanics process are done, and now it's actually doing the calculations for the minimization. And if you look over here, everything, uh, focus wherever you want, but over here, things are gonna start change soon. I guess that even that, yeah, co there, yeah, did you, you see that? Sí, sí, 
So from one contact, now there's two, because we left that window open, and that might change after each hundred steps that I'm making the calculation. Ah, oh, that didn't change a lot, but hey, it should do it, little by little. So because this structure is actually quite nice to begin with, we don't see tons of changes. If this structure was awful, terrible, as bad as structures can get, we might see actually very interesting changes happening during this process. Did you, is yours done? Is yours running? Not yet? Okay, yeah. The bottleneck is the quantum mechanic calculation. So this one is already on step 400, and look at the changes. From one to two to three. So something is changing, and the contacts are increasing. If you consider the nature of Van der, Waal, Van der Waal interactions, usually there's a distance where they are favored and they bring things together. Maybe that is exactly what is happening there and it kind of makes sense <laughs> because we are making the structure to have the lowest energy possible with this methodology. No, it shouldn't because part of the information that is used here that we don't see is that each atom should behave at least as a solid sphere. So they cannot occupy the same space at the same time. Look, another contact has appeared. So I'm gonna change to the Mac. It just started, but we're gonna have different results because that is the wild type. Oops, and there we go. So we have nine contacts in these results. I didn't check in the other one. It just changed to 10. In the windows, uh, we are up to 19. So there's always more contacts with a bigger residue, the arginine, than with a smaller one. But we are at a different stage of the minimization, so maybe that will change. Did you see those chains move? They got closer to the arginine. This is part of the heme, but if it's an acid, it should get closer to a negative charge. Sorry, the other way, negative to the positive. And that other negative also gets closer to the positive. That is expected. That is what we know about chemistry and about biochemistry. So in the Mac, it's already done. In the PC, it's missing a step. Now. We saw things happening, right? But as I always tell you, biochemistry, biology, shouldn't be about observing, but about quantifying. So how do we quantify this? You remember the menu for the reply log? So if you go to the reply log, now it should look like this. Well, is it done? No. OK, you have to wait till it's done, because otherwise the computer is not going to help you. But once it's done, you should have a list like this. This list contains several pieces of information. One is the potential energy. This is the value that has to reach the lowest during this process. There is a gradient which kind of indicates, remember when in uh, calculus you learn to understand what a slope is? Mm -hmm. Well, that gradient is kind of the slope. It tells you how, how deep each step carries you. Mm -hmm. Then there is uh, how many atoms you are working with and the changes in the relative positions of all of the atoms. If this RMSD is big, that means the changes were big. If the RMS is tiny, the changes were tiny. And the number of steps. So the cute thing about the reply log is that because it's a text editor, you can literally copy these values and analyze them in a graphical way. So while your programs finish, I'm gonna do just that. Um, I'm not going to use Excel, you know I don't like Excel, but any program that can graph can do this. All you need to have, and let's see, how do I do this? I'm going to make my screen half of this program and the other half the reply log. So I'm going to go up in the reply log. 
This is the initial energy, and you can see the scale is kilojoules per mole. And I'm going to copy paste that over here because this is saving the energy from zero and every hundred steps. My X is pretty simply zero, a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, and so on until a thousand. Oops. Uh, I'm going to copy the potential energy. If you see me making a mistake, please let me know. I don't usually do this with an audience. <laughs> but just by looking at the values, you can see that it's in the first step where the largest changes in the energy came about. From the original of minus 6,000, it jumped to minus 11,000. So almost twice as low. And what we're expecting to happen in general is that the more steps you carry, the more asymptotic this curve becomes. That is, if you could increase the number of steps to infinite, but the curve will never reach an absolute minimum. It will stretch forever and ever. And that's why I'm going to plot it so you can see that behavior. OK, there. So this is the way it looks. There is a very sharp decrease, and then it becomes almost asymptotic. And by the end of the minimization, we have a structure that should have improved as much as we can expect under these circumstances. And that means that it's a good structure. Let's see. Let's... So this is my Windows counterpart, and this should be actually something that we could compare. The energy, the initial energy on this structure was minus 9,000, and in the wild type, it was minus 6,000. So according to these values, with these two structures, the mutant should be more stable. And by the end of the minimization, all things considered, it ended up being more stable. And if I do, if I was to repeat the same plotting here, I should get anyway exactly the same behavior. A sharp decline in the energy and then this uh, asymptotic behavior. What could be different is this RMSD, but I, I don't know if it's worthwhile plotting it. Yeah, so you, you, do the, you wouldn't believe that your computer was gone, right? It's useful to know that it's actually working because this is actually a small protein. How long did it take for us? Like five minutes? Imagine doing this for hemoglobin, which is four times as big. No. Now imagine it doing it for proteins that are, what is the, uh, okay, no, that hexokinase that we have seen, it's about four, four to 500 residues. So this process, it's very easy to do here, but it's gonna take long because it only uses one CPU. There's other ways to do it, huh? For titanium. What do you mean? The oh, Titan, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. But then it becomes useful if you need to do something with that. This is the, the easiest way to do it. Now, if your computers are done, make sure you save the files. Next class, we're going to compare them. So, at least save your session. Save session as. I'm going to use class 5.2. 
And I'm gonna also, oh, but you're not seeing that. I'm gonna do that saving. For this, for the Windows, I don't care saving the session, but I'm actually gonna save the PDB file. And what I usually do is keeping the code, the 3RGK, but I add the letter M, lowercase, and one for one energy minimization, and then I save it. And if everything went well, it should be on the desktop, there. M1, but that is my code, you can create your own. It's not my copy, is it? No, you can do it, but for me, so it's my code because in my notebook, that's what I write down. The structure minimize is this. So here on Windows, I'm actually, I'm sorry, on Mac, I'm actually gonna save the session, but I'm gonna repeat the same procedure. I'm gonna save the PDB, and I'm gonna call it 3RGK lower dash wild type M1. So next class, what I'm gonna do is bring together the four structures, the wild type, the mutant, and the wild type of mutant that, has, that have been energy minimized and we are gonna compare them. Okay. Any questions? No? The video is gonna be up later today, so you can check it again. And try and repeat the procedure. Just be patient, keep the task manager up if you don't know what's going on. And if there's activity in the task manager, the computer is working. Arginine. Oh, no, sorry, the wild type, lysine. Lysine and cysteine. The mutant is arginine and alanine. We mutated it here in the class, remember? Yeah, you don't remember. That would be recommended. If you really want to be very, very thorough, Let's say desktop uh, class, and I've been saving it in downloads, but I can just easily copy them to class folder. Oops. Uh oh, here? Yeah, there. There. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, I save it. No, this is not fancy. This is the easy but way. I it's fancy. <laughs> yeah, the fancy way is. No, not camera. Oh. The fancy. Let's see. Where do I have the fancy? Here. No. Where do I have it? 60, no, 59? <coughs> mm, no. 58? Mm, no. Nope. So 57 then. 57, yeah, here it is. This is the fancy way to do it. Here, this, this is another protein called crambin. It's a tiny protein. And these are exactly the same steps to carry out the same procedure, the energy minimization. And this one is actually fun, but this is for the program in PhD. Here is actually the calculations of a protein with a ligand, then how is the energetics of the interaction, then an energy minimization, and the energetics of the interaction after the energy minimization. Yeah, this is fancy. Just look at the number of files you have. <laughs> no, no, no. But it's pretty powerful. This one is an example of a drug against P38, so it's an anti-cancer carcinogenic. Yeah, so yeah, that's the only way to see them. What I showed you is the calculations. Mm. So here, for example, I mean, you have to grow used to this. You can see Everything that reads PDV, it's a PDV, right? So here, this PDV, 
Uh, let's see, this is sorted by date. So the original PDB is down here. And this last PDB is the minimized, or actually is the refined, bef the minimized, yes, before refinement, and it should contain the ligand. So if I copy them from that computer to this one, we should be able to see on Chimera what co they contain. And I'm going to open both. So they look pretty similar, right? Except that if we go to presets and all atoms, one has hydrogens and hydrogens and the other one doesn't. And if you open the model panel, the P38 is the original. I'm going to turn off the COM, the minimized. The original doesn't even have the ligand. I added the ligand later through the command line to perform the calculations. And what we're going to do next class is use in presets the tools uh, comparison and the matchmaker to see what are the differences. So I'm just going to run it quickly. What we end up with, it's in the reply log, these values. So. There's 214 cal alpha carbons in each structure. And if you compare the positions of those alpha carbons, the difference in total is 0.4 Armstrongs. So the difference is subtle, but there are changes overall throughout the structure. That is what the minimization does. And if you want to calculate the interaction energy, you have to go through the minimization step first. We'll do this calmly, slowly next class. Well, not this exactly, the comparison only. So yeah, you're going to do the fancy? Fancy, no, estoy bien con la nota fancy. Get into the PhD. Con la casual.